What's going on guys? We're unpacking one of the biggest developing stories in sports cards in at least the last 10 years. Here's what happened. Earlier today, the NFLPA reached out to player agents and let them know that they have effectively immediately terminated their deal with Panini and Fanatics is now in. Fanatics is taking over NFL cards three years early and now we are left to unpack what comes next. Thanks for watching. Let's dive right in. All right, so here is the tweet, and as far as I can tell, Darren Rovel's the guy who broke it. I think is, I'm saying his name right. If not, I'm sorry, Darren. Before we get into the tweet itself, let's talk about the tweeter. Darren Rovel is a reporter. He works with Action Network. He does a lot of great sports journalism. He's broken a lot of good stuff before. He has done a lot in the sports space, so he seems very qualified. Looking at his profile picture, uh, based on the orange slime on his blue button-up, and the celery sticks he's holding, he looks very qualified to be breaking NFL stories. This is, it's a good look. This is usually how I write my stories, too. Joking aside, this guy has 2 million followers, so he can basically do whatever he wants, and I cannot critique. Now let's dive into the tweet. He says, Breaking. NFLPA says it has terminated its relationship with Panini, effective immediately in letter sent this afternoon to agents. Fanatics is in three years early. Panini cannot produce any NFL cards with players' names or likeness. You can actually sense the urgency in this tweet of him trying to be the guy to break it. He's like, I'm gonna forego using vowels. I'm gonna just crank this out and hit tweet or whatever. Do you hit X? I don't know what it says now. I don't actually have a Twitter anymore. So let's check out the screenshot. Dear Contract Advisor, NFL Players Inc. has terminated its trading and card agreement with Panini. Effective immediately, Fanatics has the exclusive right to make NFL PA branded trading cards. This decision has no impact on any individual player's contractual agreements with Panini. If you represent any player with an existing Panini agreement, the NFL PA recommends that you encourage the players to fulfill his contractual commitments to Panini. The last part here kind of confuses me a little bit. I don't know how you fulfill your contractual commitments to Panini if Panini cannot produce any NFL cards with player names or likeness. That seems kind of contradictive, but it's some legal jargon. And you're going to see in this episode, there's going to be a lot of questions that I ask that I don't answer. I'm just trying to get the conversation going, essentially. So that is going to be the very first one. Now let's look. He just broke some more stories here on Action Network. Here's this story. It says the NFL Players Association informed player agents on Monday afternoon that it had terminated its deal granting player names and likeness to Panini, a shocking development considering that the card maker had exclusive rights through the 2026 season. The memo says that the competitor Fanatics, which had been set to take over the rights in 2026, would receive the rights three years early. So giving this a quick scan here, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of extra news. It's just background. It's talking about how they won the licenses from all the different NBA, NFL, MLB, etc. Uh, they've held the NFL since 2016. Talks about that they have been in a legal dispute that started a couple weeks ago, and we wrote on that. We wrote both Panini and Fanatic side of there. So it doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on in addition to the tweet. They just really expanded it out some. So Fanatics did not have any representation that was available to comment. So it looks like, oh, this is nice down here. The recent deal is one that has gone Fanatics way as of late. Panini, meanwhile, has fallen in the opposite trajectory. That's going to be one of the bigger stories that we discuss in the upcoming news. Uh, I think Panini has demonstrated this fantastic case study of how not to manage a business. It's kind of almost funny to me in some of the points that Fanatics made in their countersuit that they dropped a couple weeks ago, as mentioned, where they basically said, you know what, Panini is just not doing their job well. Basically, Fanatics' argument was not hey, we're taking all the market share, it's like Panini's helping give it to us because they're really dropping the ball. They have an F rating from the Better Business Bureau. That's kind of where we're at here. Now, at a 10,000 foot level, there's a lot of questions that I'm kind of wondering that I want to talk through, and I don't have the answers. Hopefully in the next week or so, they will come in sight. So for one, what comes next? In the immediate aftermath of a big deal like this, it's hard to tell what we're going to do next or where this goes, but there is going to be a lot of developments that we'll have to just be following 
uh, the Fanatics news and everything around Fanatics in the upcoming. So now Panini presumably has been printing cards for this upcoming NFL season. We have the schedule. If I go to blowoutcards.com and check out their schedule, I can see everything that Panini has slated to drop throughout the season. So what becomes of those cards? Will they be released? When it says terminated effective immediately, I don't know, I'm not legalese versed enough to know if that means they're going to be able to slow roll those cards out over the NFL season, or if that means nothing else will be released by Panini. Like presumably, the last Panini brand boxes that you open, Optic, National Treasures, Flawless, Prism, Select, all of those boxes will be no more because Topps is taking back over. There's going to be Topps Chrome and all those big favorite Topps brands. So say goodbye to Donruss, say goodbye to Prism and your favorite NFL brands, and welcome in Topps. Now we're going to actually have to battle decent customer service and quality control. What are we going to do? As the dust clears though, I really wonder what happens to the upcoming slate that was scheduled for Panini. Now for Fanatics, were they planning this? And if so, do they have 2023 Topps Chrome cards ready to go? Is there going to be a lag? If they just found out that they're taking this over, how quickly can they crank out 2023 Topps and Topps Chrome football? Even if it's just the very basics, they need to get rookies out for this current class. It's gonna be a big class, so they wanna get cards out as soon as possible if they're taking it over immediately, which it sure seems like they are. But how fast can that possibly be? Is there going to be a year long lag? Perhaps we get our first NFL rookie cards from this class significantly after the season. Of course, Panini has done a decent job of getting us kind of accustomed to that. All the big brands typically have been dropping after the season anyways, from Prism to Select. Select's been a summer release lately, and it really has taken the fun out of rookie investment because there has not been the prospect. It's been like, oh, well, we saw that Mr. Irrelevant ended up being the best quarterback down the stretch. We're going to just buy his cards really has taken the prospecting aspect out of sports cards. Other questions, what happens to the NBA license? Is that going to be next? Is the NBA PA working? I don't know if that's what it's called, it's just my guess. Is the NBA PA working with Fanatics right now? Or is Panini exclusively turning its attention to basketball? It's really hard to say what that's going to look like, but there's a decent chance, it would not surprise me at all if over the next week or two we find out that Fanatics also has the NBA license early too. And the biggest question I think is how did this happen? Did Panini fail to meet some kind of contractual obligation? Did Fanatics buy them out? I don't know, we have not been able to really peer behind the curtain yet. So from what we do know, it's just that very quick report from Action Network. I did a pretty thorough search before recording this video and there's really not any extra info out there on it yet, but we do have a lot of questions and hopefully the answers are going to come very soon. And be sure to give us a follow because inevitably we are going to be dropping a ton of videos covering this content as the story continues to develop. And while you wait, click some other videos. It's gonna help us out.